Morning garden lovers, I hope you're well. I did say in my previous video that would be my last garden tour of the year and I'm going to backtrack on myself, so backtrack my backtrack video. But it's not a garden tour today because I don't have many blooms to show you. We are middle of September, but the gardens still have some colour, but the roses are um, quietening down for the season. But today we are going to talk about uh, black spot. I do have some black spot in my garden. Some roses have fared better than others. So what is black spot? Black spot is a, a fungal disease which affects the roses, uh, mainly the leaves, due to uh, wet weather. And um, I will show you which ones are healthier in my garden in terms of black spot. So we shall start with the good first. One of the good ones, this one's uh, not in bloom, is trying to bud up. Now the good one here is called the Chippendale, also known as the Duchess of Cornwall. That's a very good bloomer, very good rose. And as you can see, it's very good on black spot. Flowered very well for me this year. And next to that one is also a rose, which is really not bad. There's a few old leaves, but it is not affected by black spot either. This one is called Rose Meteor. This one has lovely green foliage. First year in my garden, uh, planted as a bare root. You see these leaves are very, very clean. This one is called Lady Marmalade. And uh, we do have a little cutting here. It's a David Austin rose, it's the Grace. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good as well. Let me move on to, um, let's have a look. Well, these two new roses here. This is Distant Drums, gorgeous color. Look at that, beautiful. There's a tiny bit, but I wouldn't say it's too bad lovely clean foliage and next to that was also uh, another new new one in my garden this is princess charlene of monaco not bad not bad they do love to eat these uh these bugs who love to eat the leaves though but that's okay it's good for this food for the other insects I think the light might be a little harsh, the morning light, but you can see this one here in the pot. Beautiful clean foliage, tall and strong. Look at that. Lovely green, green foliage and it's also trying to bud up. Now what variety this is, this is a David Austin variety and also uh, one of the healthiest ones. This one is bringing me sunshine. Lovely variety. Now I was at the uh, David Austin a few months ago and they had a lot of these. They were a lot of uh, bring me sunshines dotted everywhere around the garden and all growing very, very healthy and big. Next to that one, you see the size comparison. This one is also not bad rose. This one is called Danahue. Also a new introduction, lovely healthy foliage. As you can see, it's also quite clean. We do have some older foliage, but that is uh, because it's old, not because it's affected by black spot. But that one, this one is not bad either. So these two are very good for, for black spot and very healthy roses. Uh, this one here, I'm sure a lot of viewers would like to know whether how it fares with black spot. Only a couple of tiny blooms here. This is the new one called Emma Bridgewater. And it does have that leathery leaves, but not as leathery and matte as some. That is pretty good on black spot. Uh, just a few bits here and there. 
but it's generally in very healthy condition. This one here has performed consistently well in my garden. Could be one of the best performing roses in the future in my garden, I think. This one here is uh, called Eustacea Vi. And it's still, still blooming away. Very, very good. I highly recommend this rose. It's a good all-rounder. And we have a few older leaves but I wouldn't say it's affected by black spot, this one. Gorgeous rose. Next to that, it's not a David Austin. This is called Mum and a Million, a very popular rose. Very good, good rose as well. This one here, lovely bronzy type of foliage. This is Mum and a Million. Not bad. And one of the healthiest roses in the garden is a first year. This one is Olivia Rose Austin planted bare root in a pot. Look how clean the foliage is. Okay, now let's show you some ones that are not too good. Okay, now we start off the ones that are not good. This one is named my best performer in my garden of 2024. This is Rose Compassion. Now, as you can see, the new leaves are still trying to bud up, but they are unaffected by black spot. It's usually the slightly older ones. Now, although this is my best performing rose of the year, in my garden that is, it has recently developed some black spot. Now I've noticed this black spot was uh, was quite mild until about two weeks ago and suddenly with the wet weather and the slightly still quite mild temperatures we are in in its uh, late teens and early 20s quite a good uh, good mild weather it has affected the black spot has affected a lot of the uh of the roses you can see that is quite um really not good but you see, see the clean foliage of the uh the new the new foliage still uh, lots of them so this is rose compassion there's this rose here this is summer romance and it's been in this spot for about six months now. And I always thought this was quite a really healthy rose. It is usually very vigorous, but maybe it's a little bit weakened by being moved. But this one at, in, at the moment is really not doing well with the back spot. Look at that. So one that actually surprised me a little is, um, summer romance i mean compared to the ones at the the one at the back this one here if i can reach it and show you that is timeless pink and that one has a little bit but it's nowhere near as bad as summer romance here this one here is fruity perfumer from the Cordes Afuma collection. And look at it, that is not a good one either, which is surprising because most of the Parfuma are really very, very healthy and strong. This one here, as you can see, not so good. Now this one here, is the edible rose from Fino Gino. This is Theo Clevers. Really lovely rose. And up until a couple of weeks ago, the foliage was really fresh and clean. As you can see, this one is affected by this fungal disease as well. 
Now I do garden in zone eight in the southwest of England. This rose is lovely, but as you can see, it's not too good either on black spot. Right, we should finish this video. We'll look at uh, some of the roses that are badly affected and downright ugly. Look at this one. This black spot only appeared in the last week or so. The foliage was quite good up until then. We had some rain and warm weather. This one here is Summer Song by David Austin. Not a widely grown rose and you can see why. The health is really not very good. Beautiful colour and excellent scent. Very strong fragrance. As I said before, the new leaves seem to be unaffected. It's the slightly older ones. So, like, very contrasting here. So this one is terrible for black spot. This one here is Leda Emma Hamilton, which is discontinued. It's a gorgeous bloom, but I can see why they discontinued it because it's just not that healthy. Look at that. It bloomed fairly well for me this year, but nothing didn't have the wow factor this year. But the black spot is, is all over. But there is a, there's a bloom there though, still trying to peek through. Trying to be on its second flush. So this is Lady Emma Hamilton, one of the ugliest in terms of black spot in the garden. While sharing that ugliest rose in my garden in terms of black spot with Lady Emma Hamilton and Summer Song, this one is also very susceptible to black spot and I've always known this, but I didn't have the heart to throw it out. It did flower quite well for me this year and it seemed to have improved. But in the last week or so, it has developed this ugly black spot. You see, it covered the leaves. So this is a very, a very ugly rose. Or black spot. Now how we treat it, black spot, you can treat it by feeding the roses and letting them have air circulation and not being too crowded I suppose. But the way I, I treat it is I just peel off these leaves and um, burn them. You just peel, you just, just, just remove the leaves off and burn them. Don't put them in the compost heap. Otherwise, they'll just contaminate it. There's also sprays that you can buy. But it does, spraying the roses, does affect the biodiversity of, of the soil and, and uh, affects the, um, the insects in the garden. So I tend not to do that. Uh, it just looks unsightly but you just have to maybe pick varieties that are healthier so you don't get a black spot too much. So thank you for joining this, uh, joining me today and I will see you soon.